Hey guys, can you hear me? Are you going live a little bit early? Just uh, chat a bit before we start. Yo, yo. Hello. Cool. Yeah, okay, there's a little bit of latency, so. Yeah. Okay. Hey, guys. <laughs> That's a name right there. <laughs> uh, hi, guys. Good to see you. I'm going to wait a couple minutes here. What's up, Raphael? Is that Jermaine? Devin? Halumpa? What's up, guys? Why not? Quiet Path, hello. Hey, Georgie. Hey, guys. Hey, Ben. Yusuf, hello. Dazzling Action. Occitania. Devin's Game. Dang, that's a lot of people. Holy smokes. Curasan. Noctua. Timothy. Because <laughs> my hair is it's long and crazy right now. Yeah, I'm good. How are you guys? Yo, yo. <laughs> hey, guys, what's up? Okay. Hey, I speak Spanish. I'm from Uruguay. <laughs> hey, I speak English. I'm from the United States. What's up? Hey, mate. Oh, this is new for me. I've only done like two live streams or maybe three in my life. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, wow. Cool. Morocco, Ecuador. Dang. Come to Brazil. <laughs> I'd like to. I got a couple of mentorship students in Brazil. And uh, I'd, love, I'd love to go to Brazil. One of the guys, I uh, just met him. It's uh, Iago. I think it's Iago. Is in um, Bellum. B-E-L-E-M. Such a cool place. Looked it up on the map. And uh, it's like Manhattan in the Amazon. So cool. Hey, from France. What's up? From Panama. Panama is a place I want to go. I've been to Costa Rica, but I heard Panama is cool. I heard Belize is cool. Sweden represent. Damn. Nigeria? Sick. Macedonia? This is crazy. Wow. That's really neat. Warm hug from Russia. Thank you very much. Warm hug from Seal Beach. New Jersey, <laughs> India. Wow, so cool. Hey guys, I think I'm just gonna get going. This is kind of neat. Just so cool to see how many people. What a Stan has such a crazy audience. It's amazing. Okay, then I'm gonna stop looking at the chat. It's very distracting. Um, so I'm Scott Flanders. Uh, you know, some of you guys might have seen videos in the past. I have a course that just released, the Character Design Monster Lab. And uh, today, I'm going to basically be doing the same sort of process that you guys saw featured in the course, idea generation and thumbnail drawing. And last night, we did a bit of a warm-up rehearsal. And we just focused on trying to come up with a new type of Harvest Man, a new archetype, character or creature type. And that went really well. Had a lot of fun. Um, did our uh, identifying areas of opportunity and ended up coming up with a beholder, a harvest man beholder. That was really fun. And that kind of took us down a road. I, I was a little hesitant to explore fully because we had plans for the live stream to uh, explore the idea for like a harvest man video game. Not sure what kind of game. Um, that's something I'd like to go over today with you guys and get your help, uh, get your guys' like contributions, have you throw out ideas. I've got Alec over here next to me, Alec Brubaker is going to be helping me field the questions. Um, oh, is that crazy that Scott? <laughs> yeah, so we're going we're gonna to come up with a video game together. That's my thought. I, I haven't thought about it too much so that we can actually you know, go through a spontaneous ideation process together, something similar to the way it would be on the job in my, you know, just past work experience or with students. One of my favorite activities I do with students 
in the past was a whiteboard exercise. Uh, I refer to it as associative thinking. It's, it's basically a, a brainstorming exercise, but it's something we do collaboratively. And the idea is to simulate something of what it's like to be in like a concept art, uh, like a meeting room with a crew of your collaborators. So um, we're gonna start that off now. This is the drawing from last night. I'm gonna move this over. I'm gonna be giving this away to some of the uh, Patreon mentorship students from last night that joined me for the rehearsal. So yeah, this is gonna this is gonna be live. It's gonna be a little bit crazy. We're gonna make a Harvest Man video game. I have no idea what type. I guess I have some instincts, um, or at least we're gonna begin to lay the groundwork, the like conceptual groundwork for a Harvest Man video game. Um, so if you guys could. We're gonna save like Q&A type questions for probably like the second hour of this or near the end of this live stream. And the first hour we're gonna focus on this idea generation exercise. And I really encourage you to follow along actually. If you've already purchased the course, if you're participating in that, you know I like to use this 11 by 17 paper. So I encourage you to grab your own sheet, get that in front of you at home, get your pencil, and you're gonna follow along and develop your own ideas uh, simultaneously with me. So. If you could, look, we're just gonna start with, I'm just gonna put it down my paper here. Harvest Man. Video game. But what does this mean? I don't know yet. I've purposefully held off from thinking about this too much so that we could actually explore it um, spontaneously today together. So <laughs> as a fan of Homer Simpson, I do hate flanders. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> that is funny. Okay, here we go, guys. Got your piece of paper. You got your, uh, you got your pencil. We're going to make a Harvest Man video game. If you could drop into the chat your ideas for the type of gameplay mechanics or gameplay type, I think that would be the way to get this going. So I'm going to say just to get it going here, something like a side scroller. This is where we do the um, like listing the established precedents thing. Okay, so what are types of games that I like and just gravitate towards naturally? That's the way I would approach this right now. So I'd be like, okay, um, side scroller. Metroidvania. I love beat em ups. I've been playing the Scott Pilgrim game with my son and Streets of Rage 4. I'm going to write that down too. Like when I actually write that beat em ups, it's important to ask yourself a follow up question. What do you mean by that? You know, where's that, where's that coming from? For me, that comes from uh, River City Ransom. It's an old game from the 90s, I think. River City Ransom. Actually, the Scott Pilgrim game is basically like a new, uh, it's like a new take on that same gameplay, that, that same style. River City Ransom. Very fun. Double Dragon. Scott Pilgrim. I'm going to try to focus in here. I'm not the best at multitasking, so the chat is, is distracting my brain. So I'm just going to focus down on this, and then every once in a while I'm going to look up and check in. Scott Pilgrim, Streets of Rage 4. Ooh, King of Dragons, Castle Crashers. King of Dragons was sick. Yeah, I really like beat-em-ups. Streets Rage 4 is really cool. Okay, that's enough for beat-em-ups. That definitely is a, a good candidate. I kind of like that one. You know, I, if you guys saw in the, a couple of the other videos, um, Slenderman, interesting, interesting. What's Amazing Frog? 
Pikmin. Pikmin's cool. Hollow Knight. Yeah, Hollow Knight is what I was thinking of. Hollow Knight's kind of a Metroidvania deal, correct, Alec? Hollow Knight, yeah. There's an old Capcom game called Demon's Crest. It's a, it's a sick game. You're a little red demon guy. And uh, there's an old buddy of mine I grew up with, Kevin Bannister, that I went to Cal State Long Beach with. He's my first roommate in college. We know each other since we were little kids. Our sisters are good friends, and he was. He used to love that game. We had that. We had that game and played the shit out of that. Yeah, you're a little red demon guy flying around a world, getting different upgrades that change your demon type. You could become like an earth demon with the ability to charge through rocks, a water demon, an air demon. It's a, it's a cool game. RTS. I was thinking, yeah, RTS could be cool. You know, it's kind of a um low hanging fruit or obvious one a bit to do like a tower defense or like a plants for zombies. So I think I'm, I'm probably going to avoid that just because there's so many similarities to the idea. Works must die. I'm going to look through the chat a second here. Just cuphead. Yeah. Cuphead's cuphead's good. Cuphead. Such a neat art style. Those are those tend to be my favorite kind of games. Those ones that are mostly driven by creative direction, really cool art direction, great music. They're more like little art pieces. Kentucky Route Zero. I'm gonna play that on my birthday on Saturday. Play some Kentucky Route Zero. I'm excited. Um, I recently played uh, Narita Boy. I don't know if any of you guys ever played Narita Boy. It just came out recently. That was like one of my favorite games I've played in maybe the last couple years just so nostalgic it's like the best especially if you have if you have like kids if you're like a father and a nerd it's like it's so good such such good feels amazing frog Pikmin. yeah pikmin there's a game that just came out that supposedly uh the wild at heart yeah the wild at heart it's on steam and xbox like exclusive on xbox and it's basically like new pikmin from what I've heard, it's got like good reviews. A lot of people saying good things, and it looks really, really pretty. The wild that heart. I'm gonna type it in there. I'm just gonna type these things really quick. Sorry, my hat is getting in the frame. What's up, Camo Hat? Camo Hat Bill. I think you just got an influx of people, so you might want to reiterate what we're doing. Hey guys, um, if you just dropped in, Alec just notified me a bunch of people hopping in. So um, today, first part of the stream, we're gonna be generating an idea um, spontaneously together as a group for a Harvest Man themed video game. I don't even exactly know what that means yet. That's part of the point of the stream, is to have you follow along through an unscripted idea generation uh, session, like exactly the way it would, it won't be exactly the way, you know, it would be when I'm working because I'm freaking nervous on a live stream and it's like, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's not exactly the same. And I'm gonna do my best to multitask, but um, I'm hoping to give you as near to the way it is, you know, when I do this on my own uh, as I can. Um, okay. Anyway, so you're, we're throwing ideas into the chat just for different types of video games that you guys like. Um, you know, that, that, oh, Children of Mana, dude. Secret of Mana is like one of my favorite games of all time. And it's on Switch. You can get it. Secret of Mana. I think favorite game of all time is Chrono Trigger. That kind of. I'm going to write that down. Chrono Trigger is so sick. Chrono Trigger. Anybody play? Anybody like pixel art games? In the last couple of years, some of my favorites were Sword and Sorcery, um, Kentucky Route Zero, Narita Boy, Bro Force is kind of funny. I, I honestly I couldn't. I churned out of Bro Force. Bro Force kind of quick. Um, because I remember, I think it was like really hard or something. Call of Duty shmups, tactic RPGs. Pilgrim first. That's kind of, so part, part of where this is going to go, you know, once we decide on a general direction for the game, again, I've been trying not to explore this too much prematurely before the stream, but part of my thought is we're going to need like an, a, a protagonist of some kind. 
and I suspect that's where we're going to spend a lot of our time today is like, who are our hero? Who's our hero or cast of heroes? What do they do? Do we have a, a cast or roster like Chrono Trigger or Secret of Mana? Is it a single hero like Shovel Knight? Um, is it two player? You know, is it, uh, I don't know. Is it a character that's modular and you can change them? Is it more of a um, avatar, like a master chief, master chef kind of guy? Ooh, Darksiders. Darksiders is shit. Dude, I love Super Meat Boy. All's are good. Narita Boy is not confusing. Narita Boy's the best. Ori is good. Yeah, I love Ori. So pretty. I'm going to play that with my son soon. Dark Siders. Is it good? Someone had a. Nathan had a cool idea. What? Squad turn based strategy of Colonial Pilgrims versus Harvestmen, like XCOM. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Okay, I like the idea. But to me, again, just thinking of the way those games are typically laid out, like, uh, you know, that like top down view. To me, that does feel somewhat to Plants vs. Zombies. I mean, maybe that would be, a you know, hypothetically, you could make a case that a studio like that might want to play with that IP and develop a new game in that world and create some association. You know, there's some similarity. It feels like on brand. But I want to try to do something different. Basically, I'm just kind of I'm dodging that because those are not my favorite type of games. <laughs> when I was a kid, I have an older brother who's like four years older than me, and he he was always playing like uh, Tactics Ogre, Ogre Battle, all that kind of stuff. And I was like the the dumb four years younger little brother who just, you know, he'd just like kick my ass at those games all the time. And I, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I didn't like those games. I always liked the beat 'em ups, Street Fighter, um, the RPGs, Secret of Mana, Final Fantasy six or uh, three or yeah i think it's three in the u.s at least master chef hmm. yeah we're, we're not going to do plants for zombies sorry how did scott start the well the way i'm starting it right now let's go over this again so i always start with the list making okay there's a couple of videos out there where i've gone touched on this a bit and the course that just released um is that's like what it's all about. The first couple chapters that are out right now are outlining this exact process. This right here is actually how I start. I'm going to write up here, Proco live stream monster lab. Like that's the context of like where I'm at. That's my client, you know, uh, so to speak. And then I just put down my first prompt harvest man, video game question mark. And the first thing I'm going to do is list out my, you know, these established precedents, like, and that's a, a, uh, Analogs, they're, they're similar ideas or similar products that you've experienced before in the past. Either, you know, games that, are, that have some similar ideas, comic books, films, whatever. And so I'm going, basically, I'm just listing out all my favorite types of games, like personally, my favorite types of games. And my hope is that you guys in the chat will just be, you know, offering suggestions, throwing in some of your favorites. Maybe that'll jog my memory. You know, maybe some of those suggestions will just like really get grab my interest and then we can piggyback on it. I'm kind of, how, how many minutes are we in? So I don't want to like have it go too long. 60 minutes, cool. Hollow Knight. Yeah, I'll probably just wait a couple more minutes. Diablo, Torchlight, I was thinking would be pretty fun. But again, uh, somewhat similar. You know, part of the point is to take, take this idea. You know, I think there might have even been enemies like that in one of the Torchlight games. I don't think I've played Torchlight 3. But that feels almost so on brand that it may not be worth exploring you know from my perspective at least in trying to actually do something kind of new together right here another note um you know this is like a lot of people in here participating usually when you're like a concept room you know it's like ideally three five like not too many people you know part of the thing is you want to be able to be vulnerable be able to like really um just share your ideas freely um something i want to encourage you guys like here you know as we're all like kind of the way you should think about it is we're working together as like right now, this is like a giant hundred person concept team generating ideas. And uh, I'd like to encourage you guys not to uh, say no to each other, you know, like let's like, um, yeah, I'm not going to say no to anything. I'm going to ask questions about it. I might, uh, I might challenge it, but I'm not going to write it off. You know, there aren't really, I wouldn't say there's any like wrong ideas or bad ideas right now. Monster Hunter, that's cool. Um, really the vein is, the, the primary starting point is the 
Harvestman. So a kind of a Halloween theme. It's not explicit, but we're just trying to piggyback off something that's already been established. You know, it's like if you got a job for a big company, you're going to go work on some IP that's been in existence for like five to 10 years. Um, you need to be able to go in and play in their sandbox. It's a pre-developed sandbox. You know, you're not you're not actually coming in to develop something entirely new. You have to be able to learn a language, you know, participate in a discussion that's been going on for a number of years already. That's part of the Ooh Rumble comic is. It's just a cool comic. Yeah, I thought about Overwatch. There's like another thing, me and Alec were talking about that yeah, makes sense as a, like, you know, in um, a lot of FPS games, even in the Scott Pilgrim beat em up, a lot of times there will be like a zombie survival mode. Like I remember that, uh, I'm not even talking like Left 4 Dead. I don't remember which, if it was Call of Duty or what, but there were like some zombie survival modes where you're like stuck in a little bunker together and you're just trying to survive as long as possible. Or like in the Scott Pilgrim beat em up, you're just trying to, you know, last again as long as possible. And when you start to get really low on life, the music starts to amp up and get more intense and hardcore. It's really fun. Dark Souls cave story. Okay, we're at 119. I'm going to start honing in on one, okay? We're going to start to actually like take some of this and take it so I'm going to focus back on my sheet. Side scroller, Metrovania, a beat em up. I mean, in a side scroller, like a cuphead, part of what's cool about it is that you can get like those classic, like the Simpsons arcade or the Ninja Turtles arcade or the old X-Men arcade game is the multiple characters moving alongside each other through a space. That sounds pretty fun to me, kind of Castle Crashers vibe. Hmm. But also, yeah, the Chrono Trigger thing, like moving through. Or the Secret of Mana thing. What's cool about Secret of Mana is it was real-time combat, so it wasn't turn-based. I kind of like that. It was kind of rare in that way. I think we're going to go there. I'm going to... I'm just going to think of it as a, as a beat-em-up for now, I think. Yeah, side-scroller beat-em-up. Side scroller for now. And, you know, this is just hypothetical, okay? Or, or like, a, it's like a, um, this is just a like a an exercise. So it's not like this is set in stone. This game is very likely never going to be made. This is just an exercise in generating ideas as a large group having fun. A side scroller beat them up. Okay, I think that's what I'm going to do for now. But what does that mean? So, yeah, Golden Axe, I love that stuff. So, yeah, I thought about Don't Starve. That's good, too. Um, so, let's go to beat them up. We got one thing. I Some of my favorite ones, it's, again, it's the multiple cast. So, we're, let's, let's go for that. How many characters? We're going to redirect everybody. Yeah, it's somewhat horror-themed. I'd say a little more tongue-in-cheek horror, like slightly comedic. Um, a little bit Tim Burton, you know, that kind of makes sense. A little bit like Leica Studios, like Paranorman kind of vibes. That's like one of my favorite films. Favorite animated films. I think it was one of the best animated films. Uh, stop motion animated films. So it's a little bit comedic, a little bit dark, but not too dark. That's one thing that's fun about like Blizzard products, you know, is it's like never too dark. It's never, never so dark that it um, that it's oppressive, you know. In general, it's always um, inviting. It's always like a good time. It's uh, you always feel like you're being welcomed back into those products. I tend to like that kind of stuff. I like dark stuff too, but um, you know, I'm a, I'm a dad now. I got like a kid and stuff, so those like slightly lighter hearted products tend to be fun. A little bit darker. Hmm. Almost like, for some reason, I'm just thinking about Muppets. I just always think about Muppets. 
but we don't have, have any need for Muppets right now. Dude, Gang Beasts is a really crazy game. I played that with a bunch of guys from Turtle Rock one time, and we were laughing our butts off. Okay. So we're going to have side score, beat him up. Let's go with how many characters do we want to do, guys? Let's go with um, four to start. How many characters? Four to start. And then, you know, always one of my favorite parts of, you know, working on games is, you know, they need more content for any given game. It's part of the business model. So you'll have your initial cast that a game will launch with, say in like a Left 4 Dead, Evolve, you know, whatever. And uh, and then new characters are added to the roster. And that's usually where I've come in, like throughout my career is to do that kind of thing, like to play in a sandbox. And uh, that's just one of, one of my favorite things to do. So that's what's cool here is like, we could say, okay, this game would launch with four characters. And then these new casts of heroes could be released you know, after a year to sort of like revitalize, reinvigorate the game, um, the dreaded DLC. But like they're doing that for Streets of Rage. They're coming out with a new pack. I'm excited in July. It's going to come out with uh, the, I can't remember her name. The cop, the police officer lady, Max and Shiva, the ninja, the pro wrestler. And I think her name starts with an E. I can't remember. Anyways. Yeah, two male, two female. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's that is part of how I will approach this stuff. Is all here's the thing. I, I don't I don't like to approach it like just from the beginning. Just like bake it in. Must be two male. Must be two female. I tend to approach it like what is appropriate for the given game. What makes sense? Like if these guys are pumpkin people, it may not make sense to focus on their genders. They're like pumpkin people, you know. Um, but it might. So that's where we have to get in here. What are what are these heroes? Who are these four characters that are going to fight in this beat em up? Who are they? This is where it gets fun. This is where I need your help. I thought about it just for the briefest second, and then I told myself like to stop. Yeah, farmers. Yeah, exactly. Alex says farmers. Who are these characters? <laughs> Team Fortress 2 characters. What's that? Well, I, I know. Farmers was sort of like the, it seems like an obvious one, right? It's not that it's wrong. It could actually be really good. You know, some of you guys mentioned um, Don't Starve. That made me think of uh, Stardew Valley, Harvest Moon. What's cool about a cast is you know, we could have a farmer, you know, if we're looking for a group, like a, a, a broader roster, you know, we could try to take the idea of farmer and twist it. Maybe that's the big, you know, the big, the heavy, you know, the Hulk, the Reinhardt, you know, sort of equivalent. Uh, maybe that person's a big old farmer. What else we got? Farmers. Ooh, one thing that gets me thinking of right now is, uh, oh, that's a good one. Kids exploring a haunted pumpkin patch. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Kids trick-or-treating. Kids trick-or-treating. I love that. There was a an idea I had years ago for something like this. Um, maybe we'll play with some of those ideas. Kids trick or treating. That's fun because then you get well. Actually, I, mean, I guess that's kind of a lot like um, Costume Quest. Yeah, which I love that show. Super, uh, super creative. Love that show. We'll see. Kids trick or treating again. This is where we can maybe get some variation here. Maybe we don't have to commit. Maybe one of the kids is a kid out trick or treating. One of them is like a big farm kid. Will this be posted afterwards? I'm not sure. Maybe if I, if I don't sound super dumb, maybe it will be shared. I don't know. <laughs> a wandering night. The spirits of dead kids. Dang. That's hardcore. Spirits. That's interesting. Hmm. 
That's kind of interesting. Like if it was sort of done tongue in cheek, a little more casual, like they're almost like ectoplasm kids, but they're still kind of cute. Well, kind of like the way they do the ghost effects in Paranorman. Something happened to these kids and they're trying to prevent something's going on with these harvest men. It's almost like a curse on this farm or this town, this, uh, I don't know what you'd call it. What do you call it? like a county? Some Yeah, some kind of county or whatever with a bunch of farms and some curse has happened that is causing all this, you know, all these crops to rot or animate, turn into monsters. And the like ghosts of these kids are trying to stop this curse. They're like good ghosts. And that's kind of cute. Good ghosts. I haven't seen a lot of that. There's a great character... I liked a lot in um, Gigantic, the game that uh, I think it was Motiga, I think. Motiga Games did. And there's a character, Ashlyn, and she's like a little girl who had the fa- the sword of her father, who was like a great knight. And the ghost of her father could come out. I think you could like switch between them or some of the abilities, like the father would pop out and wield the sword. Super clever, fun character. But... I'm kind of thinking of some of that sort of vibe. Yeah, so you have g- good ghosts is quite clever. I'm going to hold on to that. Hey, what if you do good ghosts team up with trick-or-treating kids? Kind of well, maybe that's, again, one of the farmer guy. That's kind of like an old, you know, old a guy. It's almost like a like a piece of wood. You know, like a guy that's like big, stiff, big brows that cover his eyes. Just grunts as an axe, you know, farmer or rake, like a pitchfork. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna now. We're, it's about time to start lead, uh, like leading into these, exploring these more. We got enough ideas that we can start like, you know, placing them. So I'm gonna start actually kind of giving them like placeholder temporary names. I'm gonna have old farmer, and I'm kind of imagining that uncle. Some some of the shapes of that uncle from Paranorman, you know, but maybe in more like farmer clothes, like those kind of big eyebrows that you don't see the eyeballs. It's almost like a person, Sasquatch person. Barryman doesn't really talk. Old farmer, big brows, and he would be the tank, question mark. I'm just putting, when I say, when I put the question mark, what that does is it allows me to move on in my brain mentally. I put that there and it's like, I don't have to like plant my flag yet. I don't have to commit to that fully because it may not be the best idea, but it's like, I, I like it well enough for now, but I put that question mark. Like, maybe, maybe that's cool. We'll see. Okay. So we have the old farmer. We have um, the ghost kid. I like that a lot. Ghost kid. And what was it about the ghost kid? Like, let's see. What is it that's cool about this? Yeah. Farm animal is one. I thought it'd be really cool. Maybe that's a cool. Hmm. There's a part of me that wants to give that to a ghost because there's something interesting about that, that pairing of like something, um, something real and tangible, something corporeal and something non-corporeal, something. And having that thing that's like, is very black cauldron, like a, like a pig. Or like, yeah, a little pig. It's like tough. That has a charge move. It's kind of cute. Has a lot of personality. Hmm. That could also go with the old man. That's like the old man only grunts. And then he has, maybe he's more of a support class character or something. I'm going to write that down. Farm animal. Farm animal kind of makes sense. You know, there's like the trope of like a ranger class, right? Like a trapper class, hunter, houndsman. And you could take pets and like, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe that's what the farmer is sort of like a, a beast master, you know, like similar mechanics to Druid and Diablo or uh, witch doctor, something like that. Farm animals as minions. I, I like that. Ghost kid. Trick or treat, kid. Well, what? Smart. Which one? Someone had a, one of the last comments. It's like a game mechanic. Just 
What is it? Okay. Uh, Alec just mentioned I should uh, check out Alex's S Espen Shade uh, suggestion. If it's multiplayer and turn based, include point based system on daring and double dog daring and other players to engage higher level haunted vegetables whose difficulties run. That's clever. That's just a fun yeah, mechanic in general. Yeah. I double dog dare you. Hold on to that idea, Alex. That's a good idea. Use it somewhere. You know, part part of my point, part of the whole point of doing this little exercise is so you guys go do stuff like this on your own. <laughs> you know, like that's a, a lot of the way I teach us through this, like uh, it's essentially the, the project based learning. You know, there was a recent draftsman podcast that Stan and Marshall did with James Gurney, and, and that was something they touched on for a while that really resonated with me because that's the way I've been teaching like the entire time I've been teaching. Like I really do think that's the best way to learn is to create something of your own. It doesn't mean that's going to be the best thing you ever make. It doesn't mean it's going to get you a Netflix deal, you know, whatever, but it lends context to your studying, you know, and, um, you know, ideally, hypothetically, it could end up being something that you could market, you know, turn into products. Um, that's a good thing for us as artists to own our own products, to generate our own ideas. Okay. Trick or treat. I need a fourth kid. Yeah. Jack, Jack, a lantern skeleton. Hmm. I guess there's not necessarily. Oh, interesting. A kid who died saving the dog and their souls merged together. That's pretty wild. Interesting. Yeah, I need I need one more one more character type, guys. We've got Swamp Kid, new kid from the city. What's the goal is to stop the harvester? Yeah, the goal is to stop whatever is it's a mystery what is, you know, controlling or, you know, making the harvestmen start to animate and take over the land or whatever. And it could be more you know, a lot of the students for the course, they've been generating all kinds of different, like, you know, corn people, raven people, whatever. So if this was an actual game, you know, we could, the idea would be to have like different zones or you have different kinds of enemies. Maybe there's a primary motif of this kind of Halloween adjacent stuff, but different levels could have like slightly different enemy types. And they're basically all a result of this like blight or curse upon the land. Um, the kid from the city is kind of saying that kind of feels like maybe the trick or treat kid, a scarecrow. Like that's the scarecrow seems kind of good because I think there's a part of me that is thinking of um, wizard of Oz, you know, that's such a fun, diverse cast, the scarecrow, the tin man, the lion, like that actually might be a fun way to clothe this. So we'll see the homeless man, the hermit, a lot of that stuff. Um, I feel like that is uh, where the old farmer is going to go. It's going to be that sort of feel, you know, a big kind of stiff, hunched over character. Ghost kid, trick or treater. One, two, three. Farm animals are probably going to go with the farmer. I'm probably going to use him like a beast master, but he's a farmer. There's a part of me that even thinks a ghost kid should be combined with trick or treater, but we're, I'm not going to, we, we're kind of limited on time. So I have to, that's kind of stuff that could happen later when a, an idea starts to gestate a little more. Sometimes you have like two ideas that are, they're okay, but the way they become more interesting is when you combine them. A wolf in sheep's clothing. A mom. What kind of mom age in? We got, okay, an old farmer, a ghost kid. Um, and sometimes when I am thinking about, you know, uh, like the kids' genders and stuff like that, I, will, I think actually trick-or-treater is going to be my, that's an opportunity for a girl. Old farmer, I want that big 
you know, I just like that character. It's one of my favorite character archetypes, like the big, big chunky dudes, tanky characters. They tend to be my favorite. Yeah, the Jekyll and Hyde thing. I always love that. That's a good, who gets that? I kind of feel, oh, actually, I know who that is. That's the trick-or-treater. Yeah, I love that. There's a character it came up with for, it was working on for League. It didn't ever get turned into a character. It really led to Zoe. Just ended up going down different roads. And, uh, you know, they had different things in mind. But for a while, before I really knew what the character was, you know, I was pitching an idea of a young girl who's kind of, it's kind of like Daria, the old cartoon Daria. And she was like a dragon enthusiast. You know, the kind of girl that read those Draconomicon books that you get at Barnes and Noble to tell you all about dragons. She'd be obsessed with that stuff, really geek out about it. And her goal would be to collect like all the most powerful draconic artifacts from across the land. And then collectively those would make her like the Draco sorcerer, like the Draco mancer. Like she could, it was a pretty, there's a lot of similarities to Shabana, and that's part of, I don't think, you know, why it was a great fit. But, um, but I still like a lot of the idea of a character that, puts on a costume and the costume causes the transformation. So someone said a shapeshifter. I've heard some things that are kind of like werewolf. Um, I think that's where I, the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, that's where that will happen. So on trick or treater, and it'll be fun because it'll be a girl where typically is not the case. So you usually make like a werewolf savage dude, you know, team Jacob, whatever, but we're going to play with it. So this could be a little girl and that'll be kind of fun. Little girl shapeshifter. I like the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing. It's one of my favorite stories. Okay, cool. So that actually will end up being our tank or, or our um, Mr. Whoops, that's not S. That's our fire or our berserker. Okay, I'm going to put a little, just a little note, a visual note for myself. This is our like primary. This is our fighter character. Farmer is going to be like utility or support or RTS. Let's see here. I'm going to put um, a shield for farmer. Um, ghosts, I'm thinking kind of naturally to me, ghosts is supernatural. Um, you could think of it a couple ways. It could be more like pure caster wizard, sorcerer kind of vibes, you know? You could also use it like a healer, like the way in Evolve we had the character Lazarus. That was kind of like, you know, both. Or in like Monday Night Combat, the healer could, you know, you had like a death beam and healing beam. So maybe the ghosts can sort of like take energy from people, like take life and give life. So I'm going to think of that as like caster, caster healer. So I'm just going to put the cross thing, little cross symbol, like medic cross for now. Makes sense to me. And then this fourth character, which I still have not quite identified for myself. Yeah, exactly. We need a we need a ranged. That's what I was thinking. An alien kid who lost his spaceship, like he got like ET getting left behind. That's pretty funny. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, we're gonna go with that. <laughs> oh, graveyard keeper could be cool for the farmer instead. I'll write that old farmer or graveyard keeper. That could be a different skin. Like you know, in a okay, like in a Scott Pilgrim game, like a lot of beat them up so you can get different skins that just make you look a little more interesting. That would be an easy one to take to that basic, you know, body type, like old, big kind of lurch sort of character from Adam's family with big eyebrows, kind of like what's his face from league, you know, the dude with the shovel. Um, you could, I could see that as a fun skin, old farmer or grave digger. I like that quite a bit. That's funny, but as a skin, it's like something you'd unlock as you played through the game, one playthrough with that guy at a certain score, and you unlock his gravedigger skin. But I like, we're going to go with Alien as number four. Um, what would we call that? Home, uh, like castaway alien. What do you call it? Like if someone's lost, castaway alien, or, you know, like castaway. I don't know if that's the right term for here, but I'm just going to call it that for now. Castaway alien. I like that a lot because there's, you know, we have the, we have this precedent for like a little kid, you know, going trick or treating. That's like Elliot, right? So we have this like little girl who's trick or treating. She's our Elliot, you know, that you'd have like a fun friend. I think that kid will, I think that kid, the little girl trick or treater is, I can tell immediately that's our um, glue. 
That's the glue of our team. It's the character that's the most accessible. All of us, or majority of us, at least in the, in the West, have done some trick or treating. Okay, so there's going to be this like, you know, we've seen the Leica films, seen Nightmare Before Christmas. There's a lot of, that's a character. It's a real person, is my point. Um, and then the other ones feel a little bit more like support characters. Yeah, she's our Alice. Yeah, she's our Alice. Okay, so I like like E.T. Maybe she has a pet. Hmm, that's interesting. I kind of like using the the. It'd be fun too if people assume the alien was just a kid in a costume. And it kind of looks like it, but it turns out. Oh, that's funny. Alec had a good suggestion right now. Like, what if, based on the design and the way it moves, uh, the way it's animated, the alien character almost looks like a kid in an alien suit. And what if you're never quite sure? What if it's a reveal? You think it's like Kenny. You know, he just talks like, no, 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 you know, some kind of like goofy talk. And maybe at the end of the game, with the ending, he gets like beamed up. It's like he gets, you know, saved or rescued by his family. And you're like, what the hell? I thought he was like a kid the whole time. Oh, I like that. Looks like, looks like it could just be a kid in a costume, but turns mm -hmm. out. Bout the B said a Van Helsing or Monster Hunter type character. Might be kind of fun. Well, yeah, let's. Okay. If. <sighs> hmm. Might be a good outsider character. He's got these like kids or whatever. And it's, it is a great, that is a great outsider character. Okay. Well, here's, here's the way you could use this way. I think I. This is the way I would. Yeah. Alec just had some good ideas for the. Um, we were discussing, I know, uh, he brought up the suggestion of the Van Helsing character. And I like it, but there's also a part of me that's like, it feels so Darkest Dungeon. And he's like, that would be a good um, outsider character, you know, archetype. And I think that's true. I think the way I would use that character in this game is like um, the mentor, the wise man that you encounter. You know, it's like Proto Man in Mega Man or Zero in the first Mega Man X, Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's John the Baptist. It's like the guy you encounter who's kind of crazy, and he helps you along your way, but you actually don't get to play him. Maybe you only get to play him in DLC, you know, potentially later. But initially, he's someone you encounter along your journey. He seems, he looks really cool. He looks like a character you'd want to be able to play, and you kind of hope they might let you play at some point. But initially, they don't. He's more of a like a guide on the journey. I like I like that a lot. So the guide, the the mentor, the guide, the mentor is our monster hunter Van Helsing character. I like that a lot. He'd look really cool, and it would be a fun payoff. And if you're, I mean, think about it, if you're actually making a game and you want to really make your DLC have teeth and be relevant for people and be appealing, that's when you, you use a character like that. It's really strategic. And you set it up for a year down the line. People have already played through the game one time. They've had a good time. It's been fun. And you're trying to actually give them something new and exciting and worth playing through the game again. Now you get to, you know, add this Van Helsing type guy and whatever other characters would be included in the pack. Okay, now um, it's time to draw. Okay, I know it's a lot of this. I know it's a lot of talking and writing, and but this is actually the way I do it. You know, it's actually in in reality, it's not that long, and I got a lot of ideas that I'm actually genuinely excited about now. Realistically, I probably would take more than this. I'd fill this whole sheet up with a bunch of ideas, you know, and then I have like a framework that I could work on for the next week. I've just like got a ton of good stuff that I'm confident you know, that I can share with people that people are going to more than likely respond positive, you know, to, and, uh, and then I can start drawing. But now because we're in a live stream, we only have two hours. It's time to start drawing. I've got a cast of four people. Here we go. Four people. Who should I start with? I think we start with, let's see. You guys see my page. Okay. I might zoom in a tiny bit more for just a second. Let me know if it's getting like too pixelated. Let 
I'll turn up sharpen. We'll see. Okay. Let's start with our trick or treater, guys. Okay. So we're going to focus in again, kind of coming back together as a group. And we have a new prompt. Let's refocus together as a group. We have a good boss. I just saw that comment from, um, oh, that's Alec. Yeah, we have a good, a really good boss we came up with last night. I see as the sort of boss of a particular zone, like the Harvestman zone, a giant beholder made of like a pumpkin patch that has a ton of really scary looking pumpkins in it. It's sort of like a zone that you'd settle into at the end of a map. And all of a sudden, a bunch of rumbling starts to occur all the lights on the pumpkins and their eyes like go dim and it goes completely black. The rumbling continues. And then all of a sudden the lights start to come back on in the eyes and you see the eyes floating in the air from the pumpkins. And then the mouths open, you know, and the eyes light up and you can see the uh, screen again. And it's this giant landmass, like a, a patch of pumpkins that's risen up into there. And it becomes a kind of like giant uh, abstract beholder creature, like a mass of pumpkins that collectively become like a hundred sets of eyes and mouths with all these like tentacles of vines hanging down like a Cthulhu beard and all those hanging roots and tentacles would be holding scythes and lanterns and sickles and stuff like that. Basically a giant 25 foot wide Nito from Dark Souls pumpkin patch beholder. Anyways, that would be our boss for the first, at least for the, you know, harvest man level. Anyways, refocus. We're going to work on our girl. What kind of costume is she wearing, guys? That's our new question to start throwing out there. What kind of costume? I'm going to wait for the, for the latency here. This is, again, where we can do the, the established precedence thing. Okay, I'm just going to start listing off types of costumes that I like, that I think are fun, kind of cute. So we're going to go with um, trick or treat, trick or, I'm just going to call her trick or treat girl for now. And part of her, you know, little hook as far as DLC, you know, or unlockable skins. You know, we talked about the farmer getting an unlockable skin that turns him into a grave digger, et cetera, that kind of thing. This girl, she could get different kinds of costumes. You could unlock them. And it changes the VFX like abilities, the skinning of the abilities. So what kind of costume? A furry, gross. No, thanks. What kind of costume? I'm just kidding. It's not the worst thing. I actually love animal hybrid characters. I'm just fucking with you guys. You get you zoomers. A werewolf is a cool. I really like the idea of some kind of savage. I think that's personally what I'm looking for from the character is, oh, that's funny. A zombie princess one. Interesting. I'm going to go away from night because of Ashlyn from, you know, from a uh, uh, gigantic dinosaur school. Dragon is cool. I mean, dragon could be cool because that's, I could just like, yeah, reuse that idea. I never got used like a dragon girl character. Dragon is fun, but there is, you know, some precedent for that that I might want to steer away from. I don't, don't necessarily have to, but you know, in costume quests, there's Uma or Una, whatever her name was, and she turns that's her costume, she turns into a dragon. Dragon is good. Pardon me, my alarm is going off. It's my alarm to go get my son, but I am not because we're doing the live stream. His mama is picking up today. Jungle Girl Gothic's kind of fun. Gothic, let's see, it could be like a kind of dark. It's not, I don't think it's enough to just do gothic. It would be like gothic what, you know? Gothic would sort of be like the, the treatment, you know? Someone mentioned like a zombie princess. And imagine what does that turn into? I don't know. I also just feel like that may be too on the head. Like the princess is one of those costumes that like contemporary young girls are like, you know, what? You think I'm I'm gonna be a princess just because I'm a girl? I don't think we're gonna steer away from that because it's it's it is kind of fucking lame. I think <laughs> we're not gonna do princess. Let's give them some benefit of the doubt of the doubt that this uh, teenage young teenage girl, thirteen year old girl, will choose something a little more rad than a princess. A fish? Let me what the what's it? Ghost lady? 
Someone's like, what's with the chat? <laughs> if they're just dropped into the chat, we're coming up with ideas for um, the costume for this girl. We're coming up with like our primary character for a hypothetical harvest man themed game. And right now we're doing like a side scroller beat em up. We've got four characters kind of outlined for now, like placeholder characters. And one of them, the one I see as the sort of glue of the team, our primary heroine, is the little girl trick-or-treater whose costume allows her to basically shapeshift. So actually, I think it would, that all, she almost might be, I don't know, it might be something like, uh, what's his name? The gray main in uh, Heroes of the Storm you know, that kind of deal, maybe like medium range. And she can kind of like go in, like she can like throw candy bombs, you know, like she's like, she's got all these candies, different kinds of candies will have different effects on creatures. Taffy that makes them slow. And then she can like roll in, put on her hood and rage out as some kind of whatever monster she is. The little red riding hood turning into a werewolf thing. Let's try to not do that, even though it's really cool. I actually always, I would always play that if I had an option because <laughs> it's cool, but let's try to do something different just for sake of posterity. Superheroes fun. A minotaur. Travis Scott. Travis Scott. <sighs> a, a, a unicorn zombie. Like a horse warrior person. Like she's got a little thing on, but it actually turns her into a dope. I'm going to write that down. Someone mentioned. Like a unicorn minotaur. Like if her. You know, it's like turning into a minotaur person, not quadruped back legs like centaur. Like basically the majority of the body is minotaur, except instead of a bull head, it's a unicorn head. And her VFX are like rainbow stuff, but she looks kind of hardcore, like, whoosh, like you can rage out. And I'm just going to write that one down. I don't know if I like it. I'm a unicorn minotaur. A couple people mentioned like gothic, gothic or gothic zombie. What if? Girl who got like a unicorn costume and then messed it up to make it look like a zombie. Yeah, like That's pretty good. Zombie. Herself. Yeah, that is kind of clever. Zombie unicorn. Why she's hmm. a hardcore girl. She messed it up. Yeah, she's a hardcore girl. I think that's that's pretty fun. There's two ways this could go. Maybe mo maybe more. You know, if there's different abilities, right? We don't have to be like locked in. Maybe one of her abilities allows her to i don't know maybe she can turn into a giant zombie unicorn and other another player in the team can jump on her temporarily like a team up like in the x-men games the x-men beat them up so you could combo or like in the simpsons game you could like grab i think homer could like grab the kids and swing them around at each other that would be pretty fun like one of her ults is to transform into a unicorn mode, zombie unicorn mount. And then one of the other characters, like the alien, the little alien kid, who we don't know what it is, boy or girl, it's of a mysterious origin. That's our range character, by the way. The ET is our range character. I'm going to put like a little laser gun shape. That's an idea. What? Which one? I like the idea. It, like turns into like a horse, and then they kind of like temporarily. It's silly. Like temporarily, she's a mount, and they can like basically do like charge moves like through the crowd, and kind of like take people down. But then maybe another one of her abilities is like actually turning into this, you know, unicorn minotaur type person. I don't know. I think that's pretty fun though. So it's weird. Oh, it's Tom, Tom from the Gits, the Flash Gits. Yeah, there he is. Oh, I don't know, man. I'm I'm not I'm not that handsome these days. I'm I'm a dad dad bod, bro. Um, but thanks, Tom. Good to see you. That's Tom from Flash Gits, guys. Most ridiculous satirist on the internet. Very funny. Okay. Okay. Um, I think I'm I think I'm gonna settle on this again so we can go forward. We can move forward. Let's do, let's do unicorn, zombie unicorn. Like a little girl, a little bit goth, you know, listens to some, you know, some feely emo music. And she's taking her unicorn and messing it up. Like, you know, putting cool battle damage and blood splatter and stuff like that. It's like a green unicorn, like a bright green zombie unicorn. That's pretty cool. 
and she would still have she would have the red hoodie like the little red riding it but a totally different play on it like red hoodie like goth goth girl who you know I don't know what, what what do you call that like modify when someone like a cosplay modifies their costume who mods yeah DIY yeah DIY zombie unicorn costume zombie corn yeah it sounds silly but I'm just gonna call that a DIY zombie corn costume we're just going to run with that for now, okay? Again, because this is just an exercise for the stream. I don't know if that would actually be the best character, but it's fun. It's a little weird, different. We're going to go with it. Little girl DIY zombie unicorn costume. Maybe I'll go and make these later. Like onto the computer, like go. That could be fun. Oh, yeah. I mean, I talked about, I got to be careful about setting expectations here, but we talked about doing something like that. Yeah, maybe doing a poster or something. Yeah, you guys will find out someday. Yeah, okay. DIY zombie unicorn costume. Okay, so now time to draw. So all of us, let's bring it back, guys. Now we know our prompt. Ideally, I think it'd be really fun if we're all sort of going through this simulation of being a concept art team together. You're all going to follow along with me. We're going to collaborate. You are going to draw at home on your own. Uh, based on this prompt, okay, of a little girl trick-or-treater who has made a DIY, that means do it yourself if you're not familiar with the term, a DIY zombie unicorn costume. She calls it a zombie corn. It's my zombie corn. Her mom or dad is like, what? Oh, what's that, sweetie? I'm like, oh, I'm a, what are you? I'm a zombie corn, right? And the little old ladies that give her candy are like, oh, how, how cute, you know? <laughs> I think that sounds really fun. So let's all get your paper and your pencil and let's start drawing. Remember, we're gonna we're gonna start small, no larger than one to two inches initially. Okay, it's a good way to warm up and focus on the big ideas. Here we go. Let's see, you can see me there. I kind of like the hoodie, kind of like a hoodie. I like the way Elliot from E.T. looks. I should probably, I'm going to look at some reference real fast, okay? Just because, let's see if he's wearing pants. You know, I'm, obviously, that's like a real live action film. So, But I like the bright red hoodie. I like the little skinny jeans. Okay, I'm going to close that though. I'm not worried, just so you guys know, if you're not really familiar with the way I do this stuff, initially I'm not I was not really concerned with like fidelity of detail or making it look cool. It's really about trying to find the right shapes, like thinking of it like a puzzle. Which pieces are most important to establishing the dimensions of this puzzle? If you've ever built a puzzle before as a kid, one of the ways you start out is to find your corners. And those corners help you orient, orient yourself. And the rest of the puzzle help you find the the subsequent pieces to start building it out. In some ways, doing these small thumbnail drawings is like establishing those corners in your in your puzzle. It helps you understand your dimensions. And then you can develop it further. So okay, I got I'm gonna have these little jeans. What if she got like jorts? That's kind of contemporary. Like little little jorts like cut off shorts. That's fun. She's a little bit of a tomboy. I think that's fun. And okay, I kind of like this idea of. Hmm, that's funny. And we'll get to play with the furry thing. One of you guys who wanted a furry, you get your way because she's gonna have a bit of. My little my son had this like a lion tail from a stuffed animal that's you know kids swing animals around they get they get turned into like pillow fighting tools. The tail got ripped off of the lion, but then he put it in his pants. And was walking around everywhere like he's a little lion. Just had this tail, and he's very proud of it. And it looked funny as hell. So, what if this girl's got like a fake? You know, she's wearing jorts, but she's got this like horse tail, like fake horse tail hanging from the back. I 
I'm a big fan of the Chuck Taylor shoes, the Converse All Stars. I grew up with those. They kind of a fun to me. It's like a Americana, like childhood. It's the PF Flyers thing from Sandlot, kind of a simple shoe. And they actually make drawing feet a little easier to draw. They're kind of a simple, I, they're actually like the way I learned to draw feet was looking at Converse All Stars, a very simple shape. That toe cap is a quarter sphere, makes it a lot, foot is a wedge, toe cap is a quarter sphere, makes it a lot easier to think about. Yeah, exactly. The unicorn hoodie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do, do you, is that what you have, Ariel? I think you do. Um, so I also like, you know, like you see like, like dudes at the gym with like the hoodies where they like cut off the sleeves, you know, but like, what if she has that, but then she has little skinny arms that poke out. So she's got a, the hoodie with the, the hood has the unicorn head like built onto it and it can go back when she's in like regular little girl mode. And then when she goes in like beast mode, you know, or zombie corn mode, she flips it up. But having her little skinny arms pop out is kind of fun. That contrast when you see the character who's essentially the berserker, but depicted in this way, you know, is, is, uh, there's something fun about that. I like that. That's more of the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing. Right now, I'm just making her hands very simple. Let's see here. What kind of hair does she have? I keep thinking of Daria. I really like Daria. I just like that character. That goth girl. Hmm. Classic Yeah, the classic. I mean, that's kind of, yeah, that's what I like about Daria. Be cool if the unicorn has like the eyelashes, like kind of make it a little bit cheesy, you know? Like she took a kind of, a kind of saccharin unicorn costume that's made to look really feminine and silly, but then. You know, so it still has the pink accents, like pink inside the ears, you know, eyelashes on it, glitter on the horn. But then she went back and dyed the white green and then put blood splatter on it. That would be really fun. Put some eyeliner on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fun. Eyeliner, Alex suggested. Yeah, like a uh, very. On the costume. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now you guys have seen, just as the first sketch, this kind of sucks. I want to do this like probably like eight more times. Oh, sorry. Um, a lot of times, I thought I was thinking about that. Unicorn, unicorn for the, Mo the Mohawk. Yeah, that might not be bad. But I might just do that with the unicorn itself, have the Mohawk, you know? You might want to shift the page up a bit. Okay, I'm going to shift the page over a little bit. You guys have noticed you know, maybe you'll notice in previous videos and stuff, I usually go back and fill these drawings because they, they are very simple. And ultimately my point is just to um, be able to compare them to each other and for them to pop off the page when I'm sharing them with people. And a lot of times, this is a very simple drawing, but a lot of times I tend to use a lot of searching lines, you know, a lot of, you know, just a lot of these, so the term I use for them, these searching lines is all like find form and establish gesture, but that can be kind of messy. And so then going back on this thumbnail, and giving it a fill pass with pencil, it, it just it makes it easier to look at. It, it's essentially turning it into a pencil silhouette. And I'm not really worried about, you, you could go put cast shadows, it's just not important at this time. That's not what we're doing. I wanna do more drawings of her and make her bet look better before I do. But you know what we might do, because I don't hate this either. It might be better to 
let's do a very small drawing, just like in the just like in the the Harvestman course, the Monster Lab course. Um, and that's that is exactly how I did it. I usually do, it. do it first a first pass at everyone. You know, it's like your vertical slice. You know, it's your first try, your rough draft. So every character's been like a you you touched it to some degree mentally. Like you you have like it's been given some level of attention. That does not mean you you've solved it and it's done. It's just been you've given some thought to it and you can let it just state. You can begin to compare them to each other. So I'm going to leave that leave her for a moment, okay? Let's do Who should we do next, guys? Okay. Um cast the castaway alien. That's our our uh, it's going to be our range class. Like technical range class would be more like techie and range abilities like crazy laser guns like at you know late game character would have like laser sniper rifles rail guns stuff like that they would look they'd be kind of over the top compared to a rest of the technology and visual designs in the rest of the game kind of like the way they use the railmen and uh the alchemist characters in uh torchlight you know you have this like fantasy technology and then those weapons get really big and over the top or like gnome technology in world of warcraft I think that could be fun. So yeah, well, we have Castaway Alien, we have Ghost Kid, which is our our medic caster, and then the um, the old farmer, which is like our tank beastmaster. Kind of, it's going to be a lot like um, the uh, druid from uh, Diablo, where it's going to be able to summon creatures like farm animals, like pigs, chickens, rooster fighting rooster, maybe something like that. Who should we do next? I'm gonna look at the chat. How are we on time? We're good, cool. Who do we do next, guys? I'm gonna wait here till the latency catches up. Ghost kid, old farmer, castaway alien. What do you say, Alec? Alien. alien. Okay, let's go for alien. I can't help but immediately imagine those kind of goofy, you know, the gray, the kind of stereotype of the gray, big head, kind of like the way they're depicted in. I don't know if it's future. Oh, really? Oh, okay. We'll do farmer. Come back to. Okay. I'm kind of body type imagining that big, like a fridge. Like a person that's basically a refrigerator body type, you know, a bar of soap, a block, you know, like a lurch. Maybe kind of the big under by jaw. I like a beard, a good. I always like a good beard. I like big eyebrows. Almost like a. Almost like Grunkle Stan. But if Grunkle Stan then had a big beard. What's that? Oh, Grunkle Stan from uh, Gravity Falls. You know that guy, Monster, the guy we like who did Pugloo? Yeah. Um, that's not Kevin McTurk. It's the other guy, Dane. Sorry, I forget his name, but he's... Maybe, what's he called? Creature Lab? Creature Cast? Creature Maker? Uh, he did a cool, super high fidelity... Sculpt of that, that character, Grunkle Stan from Gravity Falls. 
Oops, my paper kind of slipped down here. He'd probably be in some big boots, like bigger boots, that's like big soles. Little cuffed pants. Some suspenders, got to have some suspenders, you know. Or overalls. This character kind of makes me think of the cleric from... Uh, I'll move my drawing up. Sorry, it's not in the little Proko thing. Um, kind of reminds me of the cleric from King of Dragons. He was like really tanky, like football player sort of body type. Okay, this... Kind of do a bit of a whoops. What kind of weapon does this guy have? I think a pitchfork could be cool. What kind of make it a beefy one? I don't hate it, but it's not not quite what I'm looking for yet. So I'm just going to fill it and move on, and I'll come back to him later. Big tanky guy. I probably would actually make his eyebrows white and his beard white, make him a little bit fluffier. Yeah, sh sh yeah, shovels. Shovel would be a good one. There's something about pitchfork that is kind of like the get off my lawn or the, um, you know, that kind of well-known painting. I don't remember the name of the guy, but the, you know, like the old farmer and his wife standing next to each other and he has the pitchfork and they look like um, unpleasant people. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but the, the, it just looks like a tough lifestyle <laughs> or wherever they're from. Anyways. Pitchfork has a kind of a get off my lawn vibe to me. You know. Someone says farmer with a mohawk was an ex biker. Well, that would be another one of the skins, actually. I like that. I'm going to write that down. Yeah, Alec um, mentioned someone in the in the chat mentioned uh, like a biker mohawk, like ex biker. I like that idea, but I'd use it as a as a skin for this guy. So we'd have. Farmer would be his like you know base release character skin, and then you could unlock later on like through as you played through the games you'd unlock different you know different achievements and you could have the grave digger skin and then you could have the biker skin I think that's fun, kind of like the original uh, designs for Francis for Left for Dead, the big tanky version of him the Phil Rob designs, Francis from. Left for dead. That could that could be really fun. I like that. And he gets tattoos, and I'd probably give him like long hair, you know. Actually. Ariel says a spray can of weed killer. Spray can of weed killer is cool. You know, old -timey pesticide oh yeah, the ones you're like shh. Okay, we're gonna move on from this guy though. He wouldn't he'd he'd need more development. All of them, it's like first pass, like you know. I'll probably draw them a handful more times. 
to try to get it right. Spray can of weed killer. Farmer guy, let's go to um, let's go to alien. Yeah, and this guy would be big. He'd be big. He'd be like significantly larger, like Colossus from the X Men game. He'd be big. Let's do alien. I'm thinking of the aliens from. Oh yeah, Viking one could be cool. Here we go. Alien character, guys. We're moving on to him for now. Castaway alien like E.T. I don't like this pitchfork at all. You know, when I talk about in the course, like I don't like to leave things on the page that I hate. That's the kind of, but we're kind of, uh, you know, we are sort of limited on time. And if I go obsess over this, it's going to probably take me like 10 minutes and it's going to be dumb to watch. So, but this is something I'm not happy with right here, this weapon. Just, just laying it out there. Uh, this stuff really bothers me, actually. <laughs> okay. Um, alien. I'm thinking of the aliens from South Park. And I think from, like, uh, Futurama. I'm going to lay this in very quickly. There's a big head thing. Big eyes. But what's distinct about, yeah, kind of like the, well, uh, the Mars attack ones are a little too creepy to me. <laughs> They're creepy. I kind of want to look cute, you know, like endearing, like you'd, you'd uh, like him, you know, like almost like a little alien stuffed animal. What kind of, no, I'm going to make him, I'm going to make him skinny. I like the, maybe he could have a pot belly because he's like young, you know, like a little kid, like a little pot belly kid. That's not bad. You know, almost, almost like Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes as an alien. Mm, that's interesting. Maybe that's what they call him, Hobbes. I'm going to write that. I'm going to write that. Oh, uh, I don't know. I feel like I must have seen it somewhere because, you know, just working in games and ma magazines. and. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I think I do know that. I think I do. Maybe not. Hmm. Okay. That's fun, though. You th think of Stitch, he has, does that guy have uh, little antennas? Stitch? No, the guy you're talking about from the... Ah. Invader Zim is good. What kind of... Yeah, I don't know this. What's the name of that character? I'll look it up real quick so I don't... The guy from... Uh, here, I'm holding it. Because I might give him... Oh, yeah, that guy's pretty cute. <laughs> that is the yeah that is the kind of vibes yeah interesting we'll see okay what kind of maybe he has a single one more like a yeah like a single thing more like the angler fish yeah that's kind of fun and we kind of break i know glow like when he does abilities or something almost like the light bulb over your head because he's smart he's the tech guy oh i like that He's got like a single antenna over his head with a little bulb, you know, a single sphere. And he's the guy who has bright ideas. He's the guy that has, you know, a true tech tree and a lot of technological weapons that he builds that he can kind of like Rocket Raccoon, where he can make, he can scrap things together really quickly. That's kind of fun, almost like nanotechnology to allow him to manifest different weapons quickly. And it's like he will have a bright idea and that little bobble over his head, boop, will go off and then he'll make a really cool weapon. Is my hat in the way? Sorry. And have his pants pulled up high, almost like Steve Urkel style. I like that.
Mm, I like where this is going. It's kind of fun. I really like the anglerfish bright idea thing. Someone says you can name him Willie, paying homage to Wilson from Castaway. It's kind of fun. Willie the I like that Willie from Casa Wilson. I kind of just, here's the thing, you know, uh, and the course I mentioned, like, you know, there, there's this like fine line to walk when you're making stuff for, like entertainment, you know, kind of tongue in cheek, funny stuff. You know, you're contributing to the zeitgeist. You know, it's not necessarily, the priority isn't necessarily on making something like so new that no one's ever seen it before. So that being said, sometimes I want to create a more direct linkage, like mentally for people. So I might even just call him Wilson, like just straight up, you know, it might be actually better just to, you know, cause people are less likely, you know, they are not necessarily going to be privy to the idea generation process and that reference point that we've established at the beginning together of him being, a, um, you know, a castaway. Yeah. I'm just going to call him Wilson. I like that. Okay, and then he's going to have some crazy blaster. Okay, we're gonna kind of crank this because we're gonna we're gonna be running out of time here, and I want to do some Q and A. Um, we're gonna do Ghost Scroll, a single drawing of Ghost Scroll, and then uh, we'll move on. I want to develop these more. Actually, I like this idea. Maybe I'll do that on Patreon or something. We'll see. I think they're fun. I think it's a good idea. Good ideas here today, but they definitely need more development. You know, if you see. If you're not really familiar with the way I do this stuff, like you see this sheet from yesterday, um, you know, we came up with this idea of like a, a beholder. That was something we kind of hit on early because we wanted a monstrous class of Harvest Man character. We had a bunch of humanoid ones, but we wanted something that's a little more like a beast, a little bestial. And a beholder made a lot of sense to me because it's basically a big sphere, like a giant pumpkin, a big giant, like a World's Fair winning pumpkin, whatever, massive one. Uh, it's floating. You know, got a big eye in the middle, could be a casser, it'd be like the largest pumpkin in the group. And that evolved, that idea evolved. It started as this, like a silly, you know, this isn't like wrong. But this actually, in the end, this feels better as a, almost like a, a base level range minion. Like if you're going through a beat em up game, that character could only maybe move vertically up and down and will like shoot magic shots at you. You know, that kind of like very simple mechanic. But then the boss would be this big giant, you know, oops, I'm going to try to put this on the camera. Like this big giant pumpkin patch beholder mass that would rise up out of the earth. You know, it'd be like, you know, 20 pumpkins in a big patch and have all these um, roots and vines that hang down. And they kind of are like, you know, Cthulhu tentacle beard. And they could be holding different farm implements like weapons, scythes and sickles and an old lantern, that kind of a thing. Anyways, my point of showing you that is like, um, this was the first iteration of the idea it's kind of lame you know and that's kind of where we're at here honestly on these on our guys here is this is equivalent to to this and what i want what i would really do is push you know on my own for another hour or more until i got to a place that felt like when i got here i'm like okay that's more or less it i feel good about this you know now i could you know scan it bring it into the computer and then just push it further using digital tools but i like it i feel good about these two feel pretty good about or these guys i don't feel like that at all yet they need more love before i would take them into the computer anyways let's move on to ghost girl what kind of ghost i, I don't know if it is a girl actually what kind of ghost is this kid maybe we need a little boy because we have like an old man we have a little girl we have an alien of unclear you know we don't know what gender this alien is 
Well, so I, I'd like to do a little boy. What kind of, what, what is he from though? Like, where's he? Yeah. What kind of ghost is this kid? I kind of messed up that neck on the, on the alien right there. I'm going to wait till chat till you guys hear that till it catches up the ghost kid, ghost little boy. But what kind? I have a, I have an idea. It might, it might be, I don't know, maybe too dark, too messed up. Is maybe like a little Native American kid, like from an Indian burial ground or something that the farm was like built on. Maybe he's another. So it's like the two main characters, but like a little Native American kid and ghost and like a little, you know, and this little girl trick or treater. And they're like the true two more human elements. But I don't know if that's too sad, you know, I might, it's kind of sad. It's kind of dark, you know, like the Indian burial ground curse on a school. It's kind of cool. Is that cool? Is it cool or not cool? It is sad. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be one that I would explore on my own. Um, really, like if I was, I think that's a cool idea, but I might not like, I may not go with it, you know, but it's the kind of thing like as a concept artist, like usually I like to do a lot of different um variants i'll typically do like you know three to five variants on a particular character idea and i'll usually do one that i know kind of fits the bill one that's uh, more or less conservative that's like targeting almost like targeting my art director's taste i'll do two that are kind of uh, more to my taste and fit my sensibilities and then i'll do two that are really out there when i'm really being like um doing my due diligence from my perspective and really pushing it one that's kind of targeting what I think they're going to choose, but I still like it. Two that are really to my taste and two that are really kind of me like flexing my creativity and pushing. And they tend to be wilder and they almost, those ones almost never get chosen. But if you look at my lineups from stuff from Evolve, you'll see that pattern. One that kind of is on the nose. Two that are cool. Two that are a little bit nutty and probably too far. Um, yeah. Rodriguez's cards? Yeah, uh, no. Said that he, like a kid from the 18th century has an eloquent presence but picks his nose. That's kind of oh, that's kind of fun. Like a little pilgrim. That's kind of cool. Like a little pilgrim boy. Like you have the pilgrims, like an old little pioneer kid. Yeah, yeah, a little pioneer kid. Okay. Ghost of a little pioneer. Like if you played, if you ever played Oregon Trail, um, if you go too fast, like all your kids die, like, you know, Jimmy got bitten by a rattlesnake and died, you know, little, little, you know, Jamie got typhoid, whatever. So this little boy is an Oregon trail, um, casualty. <laughs> yeah. Little boy, Oregon trail casualty. I'm just going to go with that for now. Even if it's dumb, we just got to go for it. little boy. Like little frontier kid, almost like little um, little house on the prairie boy, little boy, um, Oregon Trail casualty. Someone else says Victorian era boy who breathed too much coal. I don't want to do Victorian. It's still too. Don't starve. It's too. Uh, I just. It's too. I'm not. I'm personally less interested in that. Like it's not. It's not. It's not wrong, but I. I like this idea of the Oregon Trail frontier, a kid. I think the Oregon Trail thing is funny. Like that's literally the way you pitch him as an elevator pitch. He's a cash. He's your. He's a casualty of or, the Oregon Trail. You know, seriously. Jimmy broke his leg and died. Jimmy got the yellow fever or whatever. You know, scarlet fever, whatever they call it. Little boy, Oregon Trail casualty. Okay. And I like the picking the nose thing. That's funny. I like it. Ghost boy, ghost dog. Jake said that. Jake, good idea, man. And you have those little, this is the one where I get to kind of play part of the high, like if I was really making this, and if I was talking to a team, working with a couple of people, pitching them to my art director, if I was making a mood board for the character, I would include images of Paranorman. You would have those ears that are kind of like cut 
at funny angles. He would be our little homage to like a studio's character that would honestly be a part of the mission to establish emotionally, visually with the audience. So they would kind of like instantly kind of get it. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. It is kind of like you are, you are using other ideas, but it's for entertainment. And the point is to make it fun and to be able to connect with your audience immediately, quickly, subconsciously, you know, the, the goal is not to make something they've never seen before in their life necessarily. You know, sometimes that's a priority. Sometimes it's not. Okay. So this guy, what kind of haircut? I think it's some kind of goofy, like it's because he's been like dead. His hair is kind of like all over the place. His eyes are going to be kind of like. Like hollow. I guess he would kind of be like the don't starve kid in a, in a bit in that way. Like the big, you know, the lines under the eyes. Like he's seen a lot of, a lot of stuff. What if he had a broken leg? Like it's part of, you know, someone mentioned how he died of consumption. Whatever that is. I don't know what cons what does that mean in the old days dying of consumption. What if this kid had a broken leg, like a ghost on crutches or something, or or like the single crutch ghost and his dog, but he's like flying like a ghost, you know, like a crutching ghost in the air. Like that'd be kind of awesome, actually. Like he broke his leg. Like that kind of hints at his death. Like Tiny Tim from uh, Christmas Carol. You know, or maybe had some condition that in the modern era we would be able to fix with modern medicine. But back in those days, like a polio or something unfortunate like that, you know. Honestly, I don't know how to crutch this. You use the crutch. Which leg would be the, it would be the, the leg on the crutch side that would be messed up, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I got to put this up. I'm going to be all wrapped up. Mm, that would be, yeah, a big cast. Mm -hmm. I think it could be made funny. I mean, part of this whole thing, this definitely would be more on the Leica Studios side, you know, a little bit dark. Coraline. But I think that could be awesome, actually. Said, oh, no, he was part of the <laughs> <laughs> bite taken out of him. Oh, God. Well, be, dude, that's a funny level. Like, imagine, okay, we got these different themes of levels. There's like the Harvest Men level where you're going through a pumpkin patch. One of the levels, the snow level, would be going through a pass, like a canyon. And the zombies would be Donner Party cannibal type. Like, they'd be like frontier ghosts, like other ghosts like him. But they're like cannibal ghosts that are stranded and be all these wagons. That'd be like pretty dark. But it could be pretty damn funny if the stylization was done right. You know, can, cannibals, that, that is dark, but I like that a lot. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Donner party zombies in a snow level. And he'd be, I, I like this character. He'd be really like friendly. Like kind of innocent. You know. I don't even know what kind of clothes they wore back then. This is the kind of stuff where, that's why we draw small right now too, because we want to have all those. I can just kind of move forward, continue to use the momentum and not get caught up on like, what kind of, what kind of, you know, shirt, what kind of cut, you know, of uh, clothing did they wear back in the, you know, mid 1800s? I don't have to have that answer yet. Eventually I will need it. But at this point, it's not really the priority to have like every single thing locked down. There were shirts. One of my first, my first job I ever had was at an apple farm in Oak Glen in San Bernardino County. 
And I think they kind of shirts, they didn't really have a true collar. It didn't go down like a lapel. Just had a ring that comes up. And he'd have suspenders. Maybe a suspender would, we'll see, I'll just put it on. Oh, this guy's got a point. No cast, just a rickety splint. Splint. Yeah. It could be. I, I I like splint. Yeah, we. I probably act realistically. I'd probably explore both. Um, one thing that's nice about cast is you know visually, collectively across the culture, it tends to be like a pretty obvious visual, uh, like a symbol for broken. Right? It's bright white. It pops like on the character's design. You know the visual design. You see that cast. You you know you get it. What's going on right away. A split may be more subtle, more realistic, but if this is a stylized game and the point is clear communication, I think I would actually probably opt for the cast. I'd make it even bigger than I have here. More like the cast on the dog in Disney's Robin Hood, the bloodhound dog who has a broken leg. That's the kind of vibe I'm thinking, like a big, chunky cast. But it's a good idea. I don't think split is wrong. I probably would try it because, you know, sometimes some of the stuff you know, there's a reality that sometimes, you know, all this, I, you know, theorizing, you know, all this idea generation, a lot of it in your head, you do actually eventually have to test it visually. You know, that's like the reality. You do have to go draw it. And I, and you may be wrong. That's oftentimes the case. Like you go make something you're like what you thought was a really good idea, you know, intellectually, like in your head, you're just, you know, holding this idea in your mind, visualizing it. When you actually make it real, it may be stupid, actually. It may not work. And you've got to, and you got to pivot. And that's pretty common. Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly the, Alec just mentioned your idea of the float has a limp, his ghost float. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, that's why it's funny because he's levitating like a little bit off the ground. It doesn't make sense because he's a ghost, but to see a little guy like, like, you know, like, like, you know, Jimmy, you know, Jimmy from South Park, you know, Jimmy like that kind of thing would be hilarious. I think it'd be really funny, you know, and he's ultimately a healer and that kind of makes sense because he's got bandages on. So we're kind of sending a symbol like he's dealt with death. You know, he's dealt with injury before and in a way that makes him a kind of authority more equipped to be able to handle other people's injuries. I, I could see that kind of connection being made. He'd have a little bag like a satchel. I don't like that smile at all. I like this crew. Yeah, the the flying limp is hilarious to me. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm actually kind of liking these characters. They're pretty fun. But they definitely need work. And I like a dog. Like, a, you know, there's the... What was the game that came out, uh, the World War One themed game, where I think you switch between a character, I think a, I think a dog? I don't remember it all the way, but I played the game and I loved it. It was World War II, World War One themed, moving through the trenches. And there was like a medic dog that was helping people bravely, brave something. I can't remember, but it was a very good game. I apologize, I don't remember the title. But there is some precedent for like rescue dogs, you know, like a St. Bernard rescuing people in the mountains, that kind of thing. So that could be fun, like Benji, Lassie, some kind of cute dog, like a little terrier with like a mustache. What was it called? Brave? It's something hearts? Okay, I'm just going to fill this in and move on. It needs a, they need a lot of work. But what what are time are we at, Alec? Two, okay, we got 20 minutes, so we're going we're gonna to stop, unfortunately. I am having fun. The truth is, though, guys, at least for me, it's actually hard to make to... It's hard to make this stuff cool on the first batch, like the first round on live camera 
So realistically, I would, if I were actually want to make these cool, I need to go back in my comfort zone and work on them, work out the kinks. And um, that's pretty normal, at least for me. Yeah, I'd, I'd actually, I think uh, there was a question, Alec, um, asked me earlier from the chat. Somebody asked, like, how long does it take to make a character design? That's a good way to enter the, enter the Q&A. How long does it take to make a character design? From my perspective, as long as it takes. Because you know what good characters do? They make a company millions and millions of dollars. That's the truth. <laughs> That's you think you think at Blizzard they came up with the Overwatch cast in a week. I fucking guarantee they did not. Sorry for my excuse my French. They may have had some of the basic groundwork of the ideas, but it took time. Uh, great characters take time. Um, that doesn't mean you couldn't create a piece of art. You could create a piece of art in a day. You could make something. Sometimes you get lucky. That happens. Uh, but that's not something a producer wants to hear or a manager, but I don't care about that. <laughs> that's not my concern. My concern is making great characters that I believe in. But if you just want, if you want something like hard numbers, uh, usually a couple days to a week is, you know, with pressures of timelines and just trying to be practical with delivery. A couple days to a week for, in my experience, for a good character. But again, I don't really think that's not, it's just not how I think. My goal is to make, I almost couldn't put it plainer. The goal is to create a character that I believe in. I care about them. They hit the right notes. Something in my gut tells me it's right and it's fun. Someone said Valiant Hearts was the name. Valiant Hearts. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, Valiant Hearts was the name of that game. It's a great game. You know, if you're if you're a beginner, like a student, if I was you. I would not be considered with speed or time. Speed is a byproduct of confidence, familiarity, mastery, time in the chair. Um, but I don't know. I'm not trying to make, you know, I'm not trying to make popcorn here. You know, I don't need it done in a minute. You know what I'm saying? I think your goal should be to learn how to do the job, develop your voice, your sensibilities, learn how to do it. Get some wins under your belt, develop some confidence, and speed will come with time. I think that's like the most, I, I don't think it's a good priority personally. I think it's like a egotistical priority. It makes you look cool. It's a magic trick. It's like when I do the shape carving stuff, it's a kind of a trick. It's kind of fun. It's entertainment, but it's not the meat and potatoes of the job. You know, it's not the whole truth of the thing. Neither is speed. People are asking where, Clara asks, where can I put my concept arts of these characters? Hmm. You need to figure that out. That's a good point. Probably on the Proco, probably on the, uh, hmm. Yeah, okay, Alec just fielded one of the questions. What was it? Where can I put my concept art of these characters? Okay, someone asked, where can I put my concept art of these characters? It's a really good question because we'd love to see them. Um, I'm imagining, let's see here. Is There's there's a page here, right, on the Proco channel. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah this is on the, okay, I'm looking on the um, the Proco.com, the, the listing here for the live stream. There's a comment section. And I think you can upload photos, guys. Yeah, you can. It looks like there's an option to upload yeah. photos. So let's do it there, okay? Here in the, I'm gonna put post the link in the chat. I, I don't. I think that's the right link. Alec, please correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, there's a a comment section 
on the page for the live stream today, the Monster Lab live stream, and you can post pictures in there. So let's concentrate it. Let's keep it all in this spot. And then I'll go through and look at it and comment. Okay. That sounds fun. Also, just, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to shill on my course for a bit. Okay. If it's cool, guys, sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to plug it for a bit. Um, if that's okay. Sorry, please excuse me. But the character design monster lab course just came out. It, there was a 25%, I think discount or something like that. There was some kind of discount available in the first week of pre-orders. And then it went back up to 75 bucks. And now just for today, for the stream, you can get 25% off if you use the code harvestman25. So if you haven't bought it and you are interested, but you missed out on the discount earlier, it's a good, good time to get it today. Feel free to grab that code, circulate it to anybody you think might be interested. Get it while it's cheaper. Okay. With regard to speed, syntax. Oh, yeah, I recognize you, syntax rigor. With regard to speed, I think beginners like myself often are unsure when to stick it out versus iterate because there's a lot of advice to just iterate, but then you don't make something you like. Hmm. I'm somewhat unclear. Somewhat. I think realistically, guys, like uh, different artists are going to have different priorities based on the kind of careers they've had. And they're going to give you different advice. There's some people that part of their claim to fame is their speed. That really is part of their strength. That's part of their greatness. And it's cool. It is cool for them, you know? And for some people, it's not a concern at all. And it's, I mean, that's, you know, people's approaches, their philosophy and approach to concept art is, is going to differ, you know, as much as the individuals themselves, their sensibilities, the way they think about life, their outlook, their priorities, the way they live, you know? That's why there are so many diverse artists. There are, I've said this before, Smart, there are as many different ways, you know, to be an artist, to create art, as there are human beings that have lived on our planet. You, know, you look at all the different cultures that have developed a different language, a visual language. Like that's the actual fact. And you could look at our human culture and see it. And it's fun to discuss, to try to, it's part of the growth process to try to find the way, to try to find the answer. But ultimately, like my greatest hope for people and all of my students is to help you find your own way. Like that's how you become a grown up and a mature artist. You know, you have to start making your own choices about the way you do things. Okay. What time is it? Uh, no, I mean, it's about time to wrap it up. Oh, okay. Answer a few more questions. Yeah, I answered one hmm. question. I think at least the people who posted on the thing, there's not that many. Okay, maybe I'll just take it here. Okay. Alex is going to send me some questions here to talk about. Okay, going to go over a few more questions and we're going to wrap it up. <laughs> Let's see here. What's that? Yeah, you can see that. Well, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Christopher asks, how can how can one create original shapes without being too abstract? Um, there's a lot of ways to do it. Or maybe three that occur to me immediately. One is to combine something will will create the appearance of being new. You know, if you take two things that do not seem, at first glance, they do not seem like they should be associated with each other, and you combine them, that creates part of the illusion of novelty. You know, two things that at first glance do not seem to be associated. They're disparate, different. That's one way. So you're like taking two raw materials. It's like you're kit bashing two things that are not from the same world, and you bring them together. That's one way. They create a new, a new shape. Um, one way is the kind of obvious one is the like designing from abstraction. Like you're literally finding shapes. It's a lot of, I'll do that sometimes. It depends on the project. Making a demon head, a mutant zombie, um, a new type of alien head crest. Um, the designing from abstraction is very useful. You're literally like finding form as you draw on the page. It's a wonderful way to work. It's exciting, but sometimes it can be difficult to count on, to rely on, you know? It's almost like being a fine artist, an artist with an A. And uh, sometimes it's not appropriate. It's not the right method. It's the way I used to work all the time. I just didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was young on Evolve. There's a lot of pencil drawings of mine on my art station from Evolve. 
And um, those are examples of designing from abstraction. I was just making stuff and I like was hoping that it would turn out cool. <laughs> but that's not exactly a professional approach. It's not something you can count on every day. That's why I started doing this stuff because um, for me, this helps alleviate anxiety, like stress. Like I don't have to, I know I'm going to come up with an answer. It may not be the best answer I ever come up with or the coolest thing I've ever done or the most original thing I've ever done, but it will be an answer. And if I've actually done that, my due diligence, you know, followed my instincts, allowed the idea to gestate properly in due course, I will typically end up with something that I believe in and feel confident in. That's why I do this. This is the process for me. That's the goal is something you can stand behind, confidently present, believe in. Um, the third way, Chris, is something I've seen a lot of people do, which is really fun. Uh, this is something Robert Sinek's has done that he and I talked about that he, I think I picked up from him. Um, where we like, where one time we were going to go get some Chinese food. He was taking me to a restaurant. He likes, he was going to share a Chinese hamburger with me. It was delicious. And we were waiting for a spot at this restaurant. And he's like, want to go over to, there's a hardware store, like a, a Lowe's or Home Depot. And he's like, want to go over there? And I was like, hell yeah, I thought you'd never ask. Because I like hardware stores, always have cool stuff. Sculpting supplies, pipes, hard, you know, power tools. And we went in there. And he's like, yeah, I like to look at, I think it was him. He's like, I like to look at the power tools because it gives me ideas for like hard surface forms, you know? And I looked at, there was a, um, like a, I can't remember what it's called. A, uh, it's kind of like an equivalent of a, a Dremel tool, like a super high power Dremel tool. I can't remember what it's called. But I was looking at that thing. I'm like, that's a perfect, you know, that's a, a perfect sci-fi sledgehammer weapon, you know, or like this drill over here or this nail gun is a perfect base for a rail gun to build on. You know, it's, it's where you're, you're finding things from reality in the world around you, and then you're reskinning them. You're using them as a basis. You know, you're bringing them into like a new situation in my sci-fi world of, you know, evolve, you know, for example, um, in evolve, a lot of characters I was working on, I got kind of hooked on this idea of, uh, like a Japanese motorcycle, you know, like a Honda, like a racing bike, taking a racing bike and basically turning it into like a heavy weapon, like the heavy would wield from like Team Fortress, like a two, like a minigun, something you'd hold like this, you know, out in front of yourself, I'll put the wrong pose, like something like this. But it's like a motor, like a, it's huge and heavy, take off the wheels and it just has a sick shape. You, know, you take a big, heavy motorcycle and you're like, poof, 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 like blasting stuff. That's what I'm talking about. Motorcycles are obviously not for blasting we take a motorcycle, scale it down by 30, 40%, give it to a crazy, you know, buff character with, you know, big handles and stuff like that. And like, that's the beginning of a, that's like a, um, visually, that's the foundation for a really cool weapon, in my opinion. That's a way to do it. You, you pull a lot of concept artists do this. You, you know, start paying attention. And you'll see it out in the world. Concept artists are drawing from places that, you know, that's part of the mystery or the fun of the thing. That's part of what's great about being an artist, guys, is the way it kind of opens your eyes to the world around you. It makes everything fresh. You get to see the world fresh like a child, even as an adult, because you have problems to solve. You know, you look at something, it's not like, oh, that's just a flower, you know, or that is just animal. It's like, ooh, actually, that's a texture that could be really interesting in my, you know, creature design that I currently have to solve at work, etc. Okay, I'm a rancher. Any suggestions for building a creature? This is from Nate. Any suggestions for building a creature or monster design portfolio game for games from scratch? And even if creature design is your goal, what other kinds of subjects or projects would it be beneficial to include? Um, this sounds like the kind of thing I do, like the kind of question that we would tackle. I'm not trying to plug my mentorships, but this is exactly the kind of stuff we talk about. Um, in order to actually answer this with you, I'd want to know about you, like your values, what you're interested in. We do the list making exercise, try to get a feel for um, your passions, um, you know, where you live, some of your life experiences, the things that you're interested in. And... Um, that's a, a really useful starting point. To me, it's almost like the most useful starting point. 
Because the truth is, the reality is that you could go any direction with this stuff at any time. You could come up with something that is, for all intents and purposes, clever, a good solution. But there's a difference between a good idea and an idea that you believe in. That's why I use that term. An idea that you want to pursue, that you give it enough a damn about to actually make, to bring to fruition. There's a difference there. Um, so I'd be trying to find out what you care about, what you're, what you are really excited about, and that's the that's our inroad. That's where we begin. Um, and we'd probably build out a project. You know, it's like uh, I'm working on some projects kind of like this with uh, Allie, Allie Irwin, really good artist. Check out. So we're we're doing this same kind of thing. I'm not going to give away all the details, but we're doing this. It's you know we have a person who's a creature designer. She's got the interest and the skills, but what kind of creatures do you make without just, you know, stepping on the toes or following in the exact same path of a Wayne Barlow or, you know, Bryn Matheny or Tara Whitlatch, right? There's, there's, we have to find a way to do our own thing. And the way you do that is by looking within. The more you honor yourself, the more you, uh, The more you pay attention to yourself and your own motivations, the more you clarify your own values, the more you can be yourself. You know, the more unique your art is going to be by default, because as far as we know, you are the only person with your name that's ever existed in the history of our universe. And like, that's actually true as far as we know. So the more you can be yourself, the more you can be assured of uniqueness in your art um, in any project you work on. All the artists we really love and admire on the internet, all these people with ridiculous followings, that's part of why we love them, whether we can articulate it or not, is they're, uh, for the most part, they're fearlessly in pursuit of themselves. They are being themselves, you know? Okay. Cool. What's up? Alex, help me out here. Okay, I think that's a good place to stop. That's a lot of energy. Sometimes ranting like this, bringing it, you know, from the from the heart, it's kind of tiring for me, honestly. It's uh, <laughs> um, I think we're past the time, right? Yeah. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna look through the. Okay, Alec wants me to keep answering questions. <laughs> okay, maybe let's see. I, no big deep ones. It's it's hard. It's like you know, it's it's hard thing to do to speak live about things you really care about. It takes it takes energy. This guy's question. He was in the chat, very okay. active. Okay. Oh yeah, Alex said some. Okay, Alec wants me to answer a question from Alex Esben Shade. Are you throwing shade at Esben? Is that your name? Are you throwing are you throwing shade at my buddy Esben? Or is this just a coincidence? How much time do you spend exploring and just sketching loosely without designing? And how much time do you spend deliberately designing a character? Well, um, again, it's going to depend on the situation. There are some situations where, uh, again, the designing from abstraction is very appropriate. If I'm designing a mutant monster for a personal project, like me and my buddy Mike Brainerd's project, Wolves in the Green, when we're working on that, it's just it's a perfect place to design from abstraction. When I'm working on Harvestman, perfect place to design from abstraction. You know, it's just about evocative shapes. Um, but sometimes, like when we're designing little characters here for a farmer Harvestman game, almost none of this is influenced by abstraction. Maybe the most abstract part parts I'd say would be the kid, the ghost uh, kid's hair. You know, is a kind of uh, un somewhat undefined shape. You know, it's somewhat wild. You know, it's informed by reality of patterns I've seen in the way hair moves. The kind of like there's these like habits or ways that hair typically clumps and falls and stands up. And the gun with the alien is slightly influenced by some measure of abstraction. But everything else is very simple and directed by real knowledge and shapes, you know. So again, sometimes it's sometimes it's the right time to go crazy. And there are a lot of concept bears to do that, and they make really sick stuff. Um, and sometimes it's not appropriate, and it would it would hinder you, I believe. I also think that you know, when I was a younger man, a lot of, I don't know if you guys see it, but there's a lot of art I did when I was a little younger and crazier that is basically designing from abstraction, where you're feeling it out and exploring. And that was really the my, my instinct as a person. Uh, but again, 
when you have a job as an artist, you have to show up every day and deliver content. Uh, you have to be able to deliver that content. If you don't, it makes you feel anxious. It makes you feel dumb. You know, you feel kind of bad about yourself. Your, you know, your confidence will wane, decline. You need to, and you need to keep your confidence up to be able to deliver consistently on a jo on a job. You know, if you want to be a good, successful uh, concept artist and designer. So for me, at a certain point, it just I got sick of you know, kind of banging my head against the wall at work. You know, it's uh, it can be kind of exhausting. That's that's when process became important. My buddy Moby, one of my mentors, Moby Frankie, really badass artist. Uh, like the, I think he was the art director on Team Fortress and worked on. He's a he's a badass. You guys probably know who he is. He's the shit. He was the, I think the art director on um. Uh, what's it called? Aries? No, Aries was the working title. Valorant. Sorry, Aries was the working title project day on Valorant. Anyways, uh, one time I was talking to him. I was young when I was just kind of. You know, I just kind of met him and talking about concept art. And he's like, I'm not, a, I'm, I don't see myself as a concept artist. I'm an analyst. You know, I analyze problems. I try to understand problems and then I solve them. You know, it's not just about making pretty art. Ultimately, as a designer, your, yeah, your job is to, to solve problems, to help the team move forward, you know, to lay a groundwork that is useful. And, uh, and being a fine artist going splashing paint around and making crazy stuff, which I'd love to do, um, is sometimes not the bright path. So it's something to, you know, to pay attention to in yourself as an artist as you go forward and attempt to make your way into the industry, if that's the path you're choosing. Pay attention to your tendencies. It's part of the reason why I'm getting out of games is because, you know, I, I like doing this stuff. This satisfies a certain part of my personality, the Calvin and Hobbes part, the little kid dreamer. That wants to play with toys, you know, play, play toys and make little worlds up. But there's also a part of me that wants to like feel through problems and make things that I care about. And uh, that's a different, in some ways they're different things, you know, and I want to be more involved and in, not trying to say, oh, I just want to be a fine artist. Games are dumb. That's not really how I feel. There's a time and a place, right? There's a time and a season for everything in your life. I'll satisfy different parts of your, your character. And uh, you have to allow yourself to grow and change. And you got to, the more you know about yourself, the more you attempt to know about yourself, clarify your own values for yourself, the more sensitive you can be to your own needs in your life as you go forward in your career. When is it time to be a crazy fine artist? Rediscover who you are, push the boundaries. And when is it time to fucking do your job well and, and develop a process that can allow you to do that job? It's going to be different in every person's life. Okay, that's a good place to stop. Yeah, Alex says I can stop now. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. It was really nice talking to you. Thanks for your participation. I really appreciate it. It's really cool, you guys, to um, be in here and offer all the ideas. I liked that a lot. It's a little hard for me doing this stuff sometimes, but it was. I had a good time. I think I'd like to do more of it so I get more used to it. It was fun. If you could, please share your art, scan it, take a photograph of it, and post it in the comment section. I'm going to post the link one more time the the page for today the live stream I'm on proco.com yeah the new the new site and you could post your own artwork your images of your um your team here for our beat em up there and then i will go through and comment probably alec will as well and yeah that's a good place to i guess i'll plug some stuff okay that'd be good that'd be smart probably okay we got the course the character design monster lab course that just went live a couple weeks ago, and I'm really excited about it. I'm proud of it. Um, me and Alec are proud of it. We worked on it over the last half of last year. The Proco team's been working really hard on it. We're really thankful uh, for all their hard work on it, and that's available now. And today, there's a, just for today, 25% discount if you use the code HARVESTMAN25. I also have a Patreon. I'm on Instagram. Um, I do mentorships. Right now, the mentorships are full, but it's pretty common for a spot to open up every once in a while. That's one of my passions, actually is talking about things I care about with people that I'm getting to know and care about. And that's a lot of what the mentorships are all about. So um, yeah, it's a good place to start. Thank you guys for your patience. Not the best drawings I've ever done in my life, but whatever, I can make them better, but I got to do it when I'm not live on TV. Okay. Yeah, good ideas from a lot of you guys. A lot of really good ideas. Keep it up. Do more of this yourself. Try this out on your own. 
See if it works for you. Make it your own. Change it. You know, everybody's going to think a little differently, process information a little bit differently. You know, the, your way of making this work is likely going to be different. But the idea of spending some time actively engaged in developing process is very likely to benefit you in your life. So take some time to try that out. Okay, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. See you later.